In this video, we're gonna go over another method of formatting your USB drives for use in Xbox emulation. All right, everybody, in this video, we're gonna go over how to easily get your USB drives formatted and running for Xbox emulation projects using Sven GDK's Xbox Media USB tool. This tool pretty much automates the whole process and allows you to just drag and drop files without having to worry about manually setting security permissions or any of that stuff. It just makes it so it's ready to go and it makes it a heck of a lot easier for anyone that doesn't want to go in and manually do it. The manual option is still available, but why not show this off? Let's dive in. So to get started with this, we need to download the Xbox Media USB tool so you can grab the latest release from Sven GDK's GitHub. So I'll have a link in the description below to the download page but just go ahead and download the latest release. It's in zip format, so you should be able to extract it with just about anything. Next, you are going to need a USB drive of any variety, thumb drive, external hard drive, external SSD. For my example today, I am using the Crucial X6 one terabyte portable SSD. So now, first step, just get your USB drive plugged into your computer. And then you can head into your PC and see the drive letter here if you need to. So here's my Crucial X6, one terabyte SSD. It comes defaulted with XFAT uh, file system, which is fine. It's probably what a lot of them do nowadays. But to work on Xbox, we need to make sure it's set to NTFS with proper security permissions, which is kind of the whole point of this tutorial. But anyway, but anyway, just go ahead and get Xbox Media USB extracted. Doesn't matter where to, just put it wherever. And when you open it up, you will see an Xbox Media USB.exe. So just get that one opened up. And now you can change your language if needed. So it's in English by default, according to my system language, I'm thinking. But anyway, you could go to the drop down box here and manually select a different language if needed. So we got Spanish, French, and German, I believe. But moving on. So if you are starting with a new USB drive, you're going to go to prepare a new USB drive right here. And we're going to click on the drop down box and choose our external hard drive, SSD, or thumb drive. Make sure you choose the correct drive because if you delete your stuff, that's on you. <laughs> Double check that you have the right drive letter selected. Again, you could just go in here, see which letter it's assigned to, and uh, there we go. So F, and then just click on start. And it'll say, do you really wanna format the drive? So double check your drive letter again, and then just click on yes. Now, depending on the size of your drive, this can take a little while, so just bear with it while it does its thing, and eventually you will be greeted with a new selection option asking if you want to create a games, BIOS, and RetroArch folder on your new drive. So if you want to use pre-prepared folders, select yes. If you just want to add in your own, select no. But for this example, we'll just go ahead and click on yes. And there we go. My F drive is now prepared for use on Xbox. But you could also go in after it's done and manually check that everything is working properly by just going into the security tab and seeing if all application packages is there and that it's allowed to have full control. And if everything's good, like you're good to just start populating this drive. Now let's say you already have a USB drive formatted to NTFS, but you never bothered setting up the security permissions. Well, that is what the second option in this program is used for. It will let you set security permissions on the drive without deleting anything. So set security permissions on drive, files will not be deleted. So just go ahead and select your drive from the drop down box. And uh, it looks like I need to restart this actually. There we go. So I'm gonna select my F drive and then add permissions. And there we go. F is now prepared for your Xbox. So the security permissions have been added but you can always double check this by going down to properties, security, and making sure that all application packages has been added and full control is selected. So if you wanna use their pre-made folders again, that is an option. Otherwise you could just keep using your own stuff as needed. There's a BIOS folder here for you to store things in if you want to, but for RetroArch specifically, you're gonna to wanna to put BIOS files in the system folder as always. But I'm gonna go ahead and just put everything I have back on this drive real quick. So I'm not gonna use these pre-made folders myself just since I already have stuff and I don't wanna manually copy over a bunch of little things. So I'm just gonna copy all my games folders right on in and just let it do its thing. All right. And then as far as BIOS files go, again, for ones that are RetroArch specific, you need to make sure they go in your RetroArch system folder. So pretty much everything I have in here also works on RetroArch. So I'm just gonna copy everything in here 
And there we go, that's now ready to go. And then as for this BIOS folder, so if you are doing standalone um, Flycast, PCSX2, this is where you could put like your just standard Dreamcast BIOS and PS2 BIOS if you want to just simplify the file structure and not have to go to your RetroArch system folder. So like I could just drag, I could just drag these in here right here. And I'm just gonna rename this real quick. You don't have to name things like this. This is just for my own simplification. So there we go. Now I can point Flycast and PCSX2 to these folders instead of going into the RetroArch system folder. Not exactly needed, but it's something you could do. And this is just kind of a brief overgeneralization of populating the folders, obviously. If you want more in-depth looks at BIOS files, game setup, things like that, be sure to check out the RetroArch setup playlist, the Xbox emulation setup playlist, for more in-depth looks at game setup and BIOS files and placements and all that good jazz. But from here, you can just go ahead and get your drive plugged into your Xbox, retail mode, dev mode, doesn't really matter. And you should get a pop-up that asks you if you want to format the drive as media storage or Xbox storage. Choose media, otherwise everything you just did will be erased. So use for media. And now you can just go ahead and start configuring your emulators. So here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and set up my... Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and set up my um, BIOS folders real quick. They already have been set up before. And there we go. Oh, there we go. PS2 emulation still up and running. Good. And then for Dolphin, just go in here. And I can add my game folder here. And again, if you want more advanced setup options for all these emulators, be sure to check out my Xbox playlist for setting up emulators, but there we go. And then finally for RetroArch, you just go in and then into the settings tab directory, you can manually set all of your BIOS and system options here. So and there we go. So just a quick little demo of that as well. And there you have it, pretty much the easiest way to get your Xbox USB set up for use in Xbox emulation projects and having everything just work. Now that isn't to say it isn't without issues, there will be times where the drive won't format the first time you have to try it again, and sometimes the Xbox won't see the drive so you have to go through the whole format process again there as well. So still, again, not without issues, but it's definitely a lot simpler than manually putting in the security permissions yourself, so I hope this helps get a lot of you set up quicker than before. But again, a big thank you to Sven GDK for making this program for everyone in the community to use, and thank you to everyone who watched this video. But we're gonna go ahead and call it there, so thank you again. If you haven't already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, depending on how much you like this video, as well as the sub button notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content coming your way, and I'd always love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in helping keep the channel going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. You are all amazing, you're champions, couldn't do it without you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.